Well, good afternoon. My name is Colton Sieverts. I'm Bailey Winning. I'm Caitlin Washnoff. I'm Emily Neely. And I'm Isaac Glitz. And this is the North Harrison FFA Chapter's proposed outdoor discovery center. To kick things off, we're going to show you a map of our campus. At the north side, you will see North Harrison Elementary School. To the south will be North Harrison High School. And the west will be North Harrison Middle School. Our proposed discovery center is on the east side, highlighted in blue. This has woods, prairie, and cropland. This is a close-up so you can see the bus compound that is in our proposed area, but that will not intervene or mess with anything that we will be taking care of. So a little bit about the history of our land. So this 30-acre plot, um, four to five acres of it have been in crop fields, which is a corn and soybean rotation. There are cross-country trails throughout the outskirts of the plot of land. And throughout the woods, there are some unmaintained trails, as shown in this picture here. But they haven't really been used for about 20 years. So they're really run down, and we plan to make that part of our plan to fix those up. Our vision center centers around soil and water conservation, aquatic and wildlife habitat, and, by do, and to center on that, we're going to revitalize the trails, build a pond, create a food plot, build a wildlife viewing area for students and other people in the community to view the wildlife and educational purposes for all of our schools. Okay, so to start off, I want to kind of talk about our soil and land use. Um, like Emily said earlier, we have about four to five acres that we farm, and you can kind of see that like right there or whatever. Um, and that we do that in cooperation with McAfee Farms, which is a local farmer, and they did have children that went through our school. They've all graduated since then, so we kind of do have ties with them. They are members of our community. Um, and we do a corn and soybean rotation, and with that, we kind of raise funds for like our agricultural department, so part of that could help fund our project. Um, and we currently practice no-till, but um, one thing that we could do to maybe improve our farmland in the future is plant a cover crop in the fall. And we have decided on hard red winter wheat. That would be like our cover crop of choice, um, just because it's kind of easier to maintain. Um, and that would also help reduce some of the erosion that goes on. Um, the next thing with the soil and land use is the trails. Emily said earlier that we have trails through our woods that haven't really been maintained. They're kind of run down. You saw in the picture what they look like. Um, we, pay, we plan to put gravel over those trails and try to make that a little more accessible and make it easier for people to be able to get back to our pond and land plot that we talked about. Um, the next thing, with the pond, we plan to put it, uh, as you can see over there, you can kind of see where we plan to put it. The, um, the soil there is a VC which is a crider soil and basically that means that um, it's well drained with sl steep slopes so in order to get it to hold water we would either need a pond liner or some kind of sealant. Okay so our pond is going to be our biggest thing that we are going to be putting in and it is going to cost us a lot of money. It is going to be in the woods and it's going to be about a 30 to a fourth acre pond. After talking with camera excavating, it is going to cost us about $3,000 to dig the pond, and we are, as Caitlin said, the soil being well drained, we are going to need to buy a pond liner, which will cost us over a little bit of $8,000, and at, we are going to get funding from that from TSI uh, and selective tree removal, and also riverboat revenue. Um, as far as fish, after talking with Andrew's fish farm, we decided that bluegill and largemouth bass would be best because they could live in the wood with environment. And we are also going to be putting in duck boxes. Our agricultural classes are going to be building these duck boxes and we're going to get the money from our agricultural department as far as like class fees and stuff because we pay to take those classes and we're going to put the duck boxes in the pond and around the pond. So how are we going to attract wildlife to our area and how are we going to maintain them? Well, our first step would be developing a food plot, as you can see in the northeast side of the <coughs> coast area. It'll be one to one and a half acres large, and it will attract deer and turkeys, as well as other birds, as morning doves, cardinals, and blue jays. 
and how we are going to get this food supply is our local soil and water conservation district supplies local farmers and other community organizations with wildlife plot seed. It consists of buckwheat, grain, sorghum, and millet. Our food plot will be located on the northeast side so we can attract all of our wildlife to this area and deter them from coming to our crop field so they do not disturb. Our butterfly boxes are another project that we are going to take care of. The agriculture classes will also help us build these in their ag classes and we are going to place them in this, in this area which is a naturally grassed area as well as close to our crop field so we can help encourage pollination and diversify our insect uh, population as well as our butterfly population. Our viewing area so the public can see all our wildlife will be located near the food plots and near the pond. This will allow the public to come out and see everything without disturbing the wildlife and scaring the wildlife away. So the forest is a big part of our land. Pretty much everything that's not cropland is forest. So our main goals as far as the forest goes is we want to improve beauty, productivity, accessibility, and forest health. So the process we're going to use for this is TSI, Timber Stand Improvement. We want to improve forest composition and stand quality. We have three main problems in the forest. We have cold trees, which means they're rotten or rejected or just have some deformity that we don't need or want. We also have grapevines. We plan to cut those out because they damage trees, because they compete for sunlight and nutrients, and they add weight to the crowns of trees. We also have a Russian olive infestation. It, uh, it crowds out native species and it uses a lot of water. So we're gonna hand pull the seedlings, we're gonna grub the saplings, and we also plan to combine, combine physical methods and herbicide for the larger trees. The two other, two other processes we'll be using, we're going to plant crop trees. We plan on planting hardwoods to attract wildlife, and then also that will give us funds in the future, hopefully. And we're also going to thin. We're going to remove selected trees from dense areas to reduce competition. Where we'll be getting help from this, we're going to definitely have a consulting forester come in and label the trees. He, he or she advises that we log. We're going to have bliss timber come and look at it. The blisses are good friends of ours. We're going to consult the SWCD in our county for potential funds that they may give us. Aside from TSI, we're also working on this project in the forest tree ID. We plan to label various trees throughout our forest so that classes can go out there and actually see what trees they're looking at and um, just it would be hard for a teacher to explain every single thing, but if you have some of them labeled, then it might spark some interest among them. All right, so there are many different government programs that um, can help and aid farmers and local landowners and reward them for doing some of these <coughs> things. So through NRCS, there are CSP programs, and these offer um, many different aids like if you're trying to improve your soil health, make wildlife habitats, do stuff with forest management, or different crop production things, they can provide grants. And CSP stands for Conservative Stewardship Program. So CSP offers many different grants, and they encourage ag owners and ag producers to do more eco-friendly things that help the environment, such as um, like the TSI that Isaac mentioned, or the no-till that we are currently practicing or different cover crops and stuff like that. So another thing we will also do is work with Harrison County SWCD and they offer grant money for to do TSI, which is the Harrison County SWCD is funded, funded through the riverboat revenue that we get from the casino that we have in our county. Um, another thing we also plan to do is water testing and um, as you see on the table there, our Ag Department has several different of these tools that we can use to A, help 
make sure our water is healthy and safe for the different aquatics that Bailey talked about and the different wildlife that they can drink out of the pond. And also our ag classes can use these tools to learn about different types of water testing and use those to educate the classes about these kinds of things. Okay, so to kind of take care of our precious plan here, we're gonna have quarterly meetings. Um, as you can you kind of see who we want here, but um, we, we're gonna have quarterly, quarterly meetings consisting of various designated school and community members. During the meetings, they'll talk about current events that are happen, happening in the community that relate to our um, land plot out here, the project, pro, progress of projects that are going on in our, on our land plot, such as the building of the pond, the progress of the food plot, or the observation decks, um, and how those are coming along, and also future plans for the designated area. So if we decide that we want to add something to the area or take something away, do something different, those will be discuss discussed at our quarterly meetings. This will also kind of be where we talk about like the upkeep, upkeep of our trails and things such as that. Um, and to kind of wrap things up, we've developed a site where students can experience hands-on learning through natural resources education. So like they talked about, we will be building duck boxes, butterfly boxes, observation decks, so the kids can actually get out and learn about these things. Um, and these things, like Bailey said earlier, are center, centered around soil and water conservation and aquatic and wildlife habitats. So we can actually get these kids out and experience kind of nature, because that's a big thing that not a lot of kids get to experience that experience that anymore. Does anybody have any questions? The, uh, what was the soil type again where the pond was going to be? Um, it is a VCBD3, which is a crider soil. And, uh, you know, I noticed on your costs that um, that was obviously the most expensive thing in all your costs. Not only to have the pond dug, which you're going to have anyway, but the liner especially. Mm -hmm. Is are there any are there any other sites on the property where the soil would lend itself better to holding a pond, so you wouldn't have to have a liner? Well, a lot of our soil is well drained, just because, like, that's just Harrison County soil. Is most of it's not like swampy soil and a lot of like that school soil is the VCB D3 like if you look at the soil survey that's in the thing a lot like a big portion of it is the mm -hmm. well drained soil so we decided like to keep it kind of away from our like in the middle of our crop fields and food plot that would probably be the best like it's going to cost a lot but it'd probably be the best location to get it 